Good evening, everyone. It being 7 p.m., we're going to start the uh, planning board meeting for October 15, 2020. Um, in attendance tonight is myself, Alan Diaz, Rick Mary, um, Mark Milius. I got a message that Gordon Andrews will not be attending. Just got that message. And I haven't, haven't heard anything from Miss True. Um, I just want to quickly go over the agenda. Um, I'm assuming everybody's looked at it. There's any additions need to be made? Okay. A seven o'clock appointment. Complete streets. Identify yourself for the record. So I'm Cordy Beckwith. You're from uh, Green Seal Environmental. Um, I've been working with Steve Hayward from the DPW on this Complete Streets program. It's been about a year now that we've been. This has been in the works. Um, so I did provide. A, oops. <laughs> oh. Did you want to take your mask off? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. It's, oh, okay. it's up to you. Uh, easy to talk that way. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Um, so I believe you've all received a, a brief little summary PowerPoint of the Complete Streets program. Um, so I just wanted to give you some background information on what it is and what our goals are for within the town of Halifax. Um, so a complete street is a street that's not only focused on cars, but is also focused on bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, users of all modes and abilities, um, specifically including provisions for uh, the disabled, the elderly, um, people who might not be comfortable with walking on a really crowded, busy street um, with high traffic volume and high speeds. Um, so this program is supposed to make uh, streets in the town walkable and bikeable for, for anyone who wants to use it. Um, so the benefits of these kinds of streets are include safety, reducing uh, pedestrian and bicyclist uh, crashes, um, providing accessibility for all members of the town um, and the community, um, providing different transportation op options to make it a little easier for someone to walk from their home to a school or a retail establishment or their business. Um, and then it also increases general health and well-being for members of the community. Um, so the Complete Streets funding program is uh, specifically what we're here for tonight. Um, and that started in Massachusetts in 2017. It's a, a multi, or it's a national program. Um, different states have different versions of this, um, but MassDOT is running the Massachusetts option. Um, so in that pro, uh, funding framework, there is a three-tier process to access these funds. Um, tier one is a uh, training and developing Complete Streets policy, which has been completed. Um, myself and Steve Hayward did the Complete Streets training program um, about a year ago. It was pretty good. Um, and the Board of Selectmen has approved a Complete Streets policy. So the town of Halifax is done with Tier 1, and we're moving to Tier 2, which is the prioritization plan process. And this is probably the most important part of the whole program, is coming up with um, 15 potential complete street programs that would work well in the town, that people are excited about, that would be useful. Um, and a big part of that is getting community input from residents of the town, um, different departments, um, and really discussing the pros and cons of different projects, and then coming up with a list of 15 that fit the complete streets programs ideals and missions, and is also going to provide a benefit to the town. Um, so we are applying for technical assistance for myself to assist the town in developing that plan. Um, the state will provide up to $38,000 uh, to develop this plan, and then once it's been developed, we can move into tier three, which includes um, project approval, where the state approves uh, some of our higher priority projects, and gives us a notice to proceed with the project and provides up to $400,000 of construction costs for that. Um, the state doesn't cover design costs, and in order for them to provide the construction costs, uh, the project needs to be fully designed and ready to implement uh, rather quickly. 
So that's a big part of the prioritization plan, including the cost analysis, feasibility, how quickly it would be able to be implemented. Um, some of these projects can be large scale, um, sidewalk improvements, um, connecting different sidewalks, providing bicycle paths. Um, they can also be really minor, um, just providing a new raised crosswalk somewhere, um, adding street lights, um, repaving and resurfacing streets where that might be a concern. So there's a whole lot of different projects that we can focus on. Um, so part of the prioritization plan process, um, when compiling that, is going to be looking at existing uh, planning studies that have been done um, in the region and in the town. Um, there was a 2010 master plan that uh, did mention some of the uh, transportation concerns. Um, it's a little outdated now. That was pre-Walmart, so. Big difference, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there'll need to be some uh, new updated input. Um, and that's where uh, the, the boards are going to, to come in um, helpful, and you guys will be able to provide your insight and input into what you think is most important for the town to see. Um, and then there'll also be a big public input um, where one of the mechanisms that other towns have used successfully is having a, it's sort of like a Google Maps survey where there's a map of the town of Halifax and someone can go in and click on an intersection or street that they have an issue with, um, click it, describe the problem, um, and then we can collect all that data and use it to see where residents think the biggest issues are in the town and use that as part of our our process for compiling this. Um, we'd also like to look at areas where there have been crashes um, with pedestrians and bicyclists and sort of compile all of that. Um, another part is just mapping the sidewalk network and seeing if there are any gaps that could be closed easily um, and not so easily, uh, whichever seems more, more important to, to get going on. Um, Another big factor is seeing where these paths could take people. Um, if it's on the route to school, it could be a higher priority um, to provide an easy walking path to school from a residential neighborhood or to businesses. Um, but the great thing about Complete Streets is that the program is very community oriented. So the town of Halifax's plan is gonna look very different than Brookline's plan. Um, and they take that into account. So we were able to see what the needs are here and work at it, um, look at it at a local level and figure out what people want and what would be most helpful. Um, so once we map out the <coughs> pedestrian network, uh, bicycle network, um, trails in the in wooded areas also count as pedestrian networks. Um, so if there are any walking trails that could use improvements, um, that can be a, a project that we work on. Um, and then we'll work on collecting input from boards and um, the people in the community and work with uh, everyone to identify a list of potential projects. And then from that list, we'll sort of narrow it down based on cost analysis and feasibility um, and how much it aligns with the Complete Streets program because ultimately the state will score these projects based on how much they align with their, their vision. Um, so we do need to keep that all in mind. Um, we can't just say, oh, we'd really like to develop this very long sidewalk yeah. and if it doesn't it goes quite fit, yeah. <laughs> um, so then once uh, we have that list and we can develop which ones uh, are worth going through the design process with, um, figuring out what the biggest priorities are, we'll submit that to the state. Um, they can choose they don't need to choose the first priority, but they do aim to choose a higher priority project um, that they'll approve and fund. Um, and for a project to be funded, it needs to be on, or funded through Complete Streets, it needs to be on that list. Um, so although the $400,000 doesn't cover the design cost, it's possible to apply for chapter 90 monies to offset that cost. Um, and the program ends up being a, a big boost for the town. Um, so some of the next steps that we're working on after we've completed the complete streets policy which has been approved and right now we are working through getting technical assistance with the state. It's 
a lengthy process, a little bit of back and forth. Um, once that's all set, then we'll begin working on developing this prioritization plan. Um, probably plan some sort of public meeting, um, either with Zoom or an in-person meeting somewhere um, where people can come up and actually give their input. Um, I'd imagine that that would be after we already introduced the mapping components that people can sort of start thinking about it and come in with ideas. Um, and then we'll go back to, to departments and ask for, for your input as well. Um, at this point in time, the prioritization plan is due April 1st of 2021. So we are ready to gear things up as soon as we get that technical assistance approved. Um, I think that's about a summary of it. Um, a whole bunch of other towns have uh, gone through this process. Um, in that pamphlet, I gave an example prioritization plan from the town of Abington. Um, it just shows the the complete streets spreadsheet that they provide that we need to, to use that that template to fill out um, what projects are important um, and give a, a list of reasons basically to justify why we believe that fits the complete streets intent and why it would be beneficial and prove that we've done the right research and actually thought through everything. Is that your Abington plan? Yes, it might be hard to read. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> impossible. Um, They're very easy to find online. Um, a lot of this is very public information. Um, the Complete Streets website on mass.gov uh, um, has a, a portal that shows the different, it shows a map of Massachusetts and gives you the status of each individual town, whether or not they're in the program, uh, what tier they're at in the program. Um, and if they've already submitted projects, then you can, you can go and take a look at them. Um, so we have a lot to work on to know what's been successful in the past and what's not been so successful. Um, so we believe we can definitely use that as a, a benefit here. Might help pick what to prioritize too, is to see what they've accepted in the past. Yes. Is that about it? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to open the board up for questions. I just got a couple. Just to, um, you, Steve, and yourself have completed the tier one. Yes. Okay. And the tier two is the next step, which is the prioritization program. Yes. And we need to have 15 projects. Yes. And okay. they don't all need to be giant projects. Okay. But we need 15 projects. Yes. Okay. This Google Earth program. Is that a program that you can send to us when we get ready to yes. put that together? So okay. the program that I specifically have in mind, it's called Wiki Mapper. Um, it's, it's run by a, a computer developer. It's, um, last time I spoke to him, it was relatively cheap for him to, to produce a map and to maintain the, the data on it online. Um, it seems like the easiest platform to, to just send out a link and let everyone access that. Um, it can either be anonymous or you can include your name on it. Yeah, the easier it is, the more likely people are to participate. Mm -hmm. I'd like to open it up to the board for questions. <coughs> I'll start with Mark. Um, yeah, I guess my only question would be um, if you need us or if you'd like us to hold a meeting and open it to the public for to get some feedback. That would probably be yeah, we could, helpful. We could throw that on our agenda at some point just to see. Okay. But other than that, it sounds good. It sounds like it's a flexible program. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sidewalk thing might actually be something that we could take advantage of where we have a lot of new proposals, new developments, and we're adding the sidewalks as a requirement, but we hadn't in the past. So like you're saying, we end up with you know two streets down has one, and then the next two don't. So that, that might be something we could take advantage of. And I did speak to, to the highway surveyor, but I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll put the rest of the board up. Uh, no, I have nothing to say. It all sounds pretty good. And I'd love to hear what the highway supervisor needs. Okay. Let me just finish up. I, I have spoken to Steve about some of the major pro, uh, projects. I didn't realize we needed to have 15, so I guess there's, there's going to be a lot of room. Oh, yes. um, and I'll let speak to this. He, we've got two major intersections with multiple accidents, mm -hmm. um, being Pine Street and Plymouth Street, and then Oak Street and uh, Holmes Street. Um, 
would the Complete Streets program be able to assist us, whether it's utilizing some new traffic lights or new blinking lights or whatever? Yes. Okay, so that's part of the program. Okay. Now, those have to be on the prioritization list. And the design aspect of that, to get us there, the town is going to have to come up with that. Yes. So unfortunately, the $400,000 is for purely construction. Um, before getting approved, for the uh, before getting the notice to proceed, uh, the design needs to be, or the project needs to be designed and ready to implement. Okay. Um, so any sidewalk changes or modifications, we have to have an engineer or yes. an engineer study come in to make all those changes. Um, um, Mr. Haywood. I, I actually do oh, have I'm questions. Sorry. I just wanted to hear what was talked about first, but go ahead. Uh, I copy exactly what she was saying. I think it's a good program. And uh, my priority is, as you said, the place where we have accidents and stuff like that. And if we can use money for fixing those up, I'd rather do it that way. And I believe we can do the engineering with the Chapter 90 money. So I'll have to use some of that money to do the... Okay, so you would have funds available for Chapter 90 for the design. Right. Um, so uh, I guess the next step... Oh, I'm sorry, Amy, anything else? Um, yeah, I wanted to know what the town's um, obligation is in order to get the money. As far as, you know, what happens to the town when we accept the grants. Um, so it enters into a contract with MassDOT, um, and it's a reimbursed uh, funding. So the town gets approval from MassDOT to, to go ahead with the project, um, and then just sends the, the invoices and gets reimbursed through the state. Um, it's similar to another. It's like the chapter on basically. No, I, I mean, like, what is what is um, what is something that the town owes Complete Streets back? Um, just completing the project. Um, so most of the, the legwork and the research is done ahead of time. Um, so once they approve the project, that means that they're, they're in line with um, how this is going. Um, the entire purpose of this is just to, to provide safer streets and provide um, some sort of grant money to encourage towns to implement their policies and intents. Um, it would probably be helpful to take a look at some of the other successful projects in the past, um, just to see how they've reconfigured intersections, um, provided road diets, um, where they make the street a little skinnier to make cars slow down. Um, they provided raised crosswalks. Um, and it, once you sign the letter saying that you're a complete streets community and that um, you have that complete streets policy signed by the Board of Selectmen, then they're, they know that the town's on board, um, which has already been done. Um, and we'll, we'll see it through to ensure that these policies and their goals are, are being adhered to as closely as possible. Do you think that the town will have to set up another department in order to follow all these rules and regulations? I don't believe so. Um, I know that some towns have developed a, like a complete streets committee, um, but also towns have used their existing um, traffic committees or planning boards, um, or even just highway departments to sort of oversee the project. Um, or oversee the program and see how it's going. Um, I think one of the best parts about it is how flexible it is. Um, you don't need to adhere to every single one of their principles. Um, you just need to make sure that you, you can make an attempt. What is it meant by revising and developing re revisions to all appropriate planning documents, zoning, subdivision codes, laws, procedures, rules, regulations, guidelines, programs, and templates to integrate complete streets into all street projects? So the goal is for, if you're developing a new um, regulations for, for the town, um, for, for zoning and for planning, if you're able to require sidewalks and new subdivisions, um, that's highly recommended. Um, Do you know what other towns have had to adopt? And can you supply us with some examples of the zoning bylaws and the subdivision codes and all the rules and regulations that are put upon us to have to change? Can you, or is it too vague at this point? So other towns have um, 
sort of adopted that and run with it. Um, it's not a requirement to adopt any of these suggested uh, changes or implementation policies. It's recommended, so there's no hard, fast, you need to make sure that this language is in a bylaw somewhere. Um, it's more they want people to be aware of it, and if, if you'd like to adopt it, you're welcome to, um, but no means do you, you have to. Do you have a copy of those bylaws that I can look at? Sure, I can send um, some other towns that have adopted it. Um, Dedham is a town that adopted a lot of the, the Blue Streets uh, towns in their zoning bylaw, um, but I can send out a few of the other towns' policies and some of the, the changes that they've made since then. Yeah, I'd like to see um, all of your zoning bylaws and recommendations that you have that you would recommend any town in the state. Okay. One important thing is these are grant funds. Yes. Okay, so not, they're not paid back. No. Um, the, the other thing is um, I'm assuming, Steve, that most of this work is going to be on, on public ways, yeah. any of these projects. So there wouldn't be any applicable zoning changes or any bylaws that need to be amended or changes in order to provide changes in intersections or sidewalks. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there wouldn't be, okay, wouldn't be any zoning. Um, well, it does, it does say in the contract that exact paragraph I read, which is pretty vague. I don't have a contract. But. Yeah, I did research. I went to Complete Streets and looked at the projects and read the contracts that are expected to be signed so that I could make sure that we ask all the questions because sometimes when we get a grant, we bind ourselves to rules, laws, and regulations that otherwise the town wouldn't want to adopt and that would cost us more in the long run than you know, not having it at all. So in that, the, the regulation that she's talking about, that would have been approved through the tier one yes. portion. So the selectmen have already so the, the already signed that agreement, whatever agreement she has. Yes, okay. the complete streets policy is already been signed. Okay, so that's the policy that you got. So the selectmen, that's their ball of wax. And they Right, but it would also them. be the town's ball of wax. Well, they have the town. So. No, actually the town is the town and the selectmen are the elected to represent the town. They're not the town. Okay, so at this point, we're, we've completed with tier one. The next step is the tier two. So. It sounds to me like that we need to have some sort of public input. Yes. Um, is it possible for you to help either us or Steve with some sort of public hearing notice? Um, some little, just give him something that we can maybe get on a local newspaper um, so we can have at least some notice or some sort of, sort of public uh, hearing. Definitely. Um, I was waiting until we had approval from uh, the state for that technical assistance portion before really jumping into gear. Um, How far away from, away from that? <laughs> they said uh, six to eight weeks, about eight weeks ago. Yeah. So it, it's time to, to follow Any up and see now. where it, yeah. so, so you think it's a little premature to get some public input now? I mean, we know of two major projects. I mean, I can think of a couple of others. I mean, the sidewalks between uh, Leiden Lane and Cumberland Farms and uh, the uh, Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, those all need to be reworked. Mm -hmm. You know, $400,000 is not gonna take you very far. I um, think it would probably be a good idea to start planning for maybe just an introductory meeting to um, okay. explain what the options are. Um, make sure that people can't just say, hey, I want granite curbing in front of my house. Does Correct. that count? <laughs> Um, well, what would the engineering cost be to redesign an um, uh, intersection and then maybe have the risk of spending that money and not getting the grant at all? Um, so in that case, well, uh, for the, the, the sidewalks, we've already done that engineering. Yeah, that's already done, yeah. Um, and I believe that was about... How much was that? I think I have it in my notes. Yeah, I don't have it with me. I think it was about 12000 for the two two sidewalk projects. For the engineering part? Yes. The two, uh, would that be the Plato Bosworth project? That in Plymouth Street. I mean, I'm on Ponset Street. On Ponset, Plymouth, uh, Cumberland Farms, that area there? No, um, between the two cranberry drives. The cr two cranberries and uh, Lion Lane. Up okay, to so, the, what I'm talking about, the Lion Lane one. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll like to take a look at that. Okay. Um, 
So we could have an introductory, and then give people some time to to um, to think about it. Do we have fifteen projects? No, I could find 15. You can find 15. Do we have money to engineer oh, 15 we would, No, projects? that's what we were saying before. You prioritize, and then you go for the ones that everybody really wants to get done. Yeah, I also think if it's something that everyone in the town agrees on, the money that's spent on the engineering is worth it. If it's something that yeah, or if agree. we voted on it at town meeting or something like that, and, and had this, the this vote is, at the town. This is not a program that would be voting on anything with town right. meeting. Um, no, you do your priorities, prioritization, and then we decide which ones we're going to go with, and that's what you you go with. And we will have the time when they come here to they get invited to come and talk or say their piece, and then that's where we go from. And then whatever our recommendation would be, I'm assuming that's probably going to go back to our board of selectmen, and then they would. Um, so we haven't developed an evaluation criteria yet. There's no hard and fast rule for how you need to um, approve the projects and put them in a list. Um, so that's sort of a working a work in progress where we'll take recommendations from all different boards. Um, Steve is listed as the, the Complete Streets contact. So as it stands, I don't think it officially needs approval from uh, the board of selectmen once the prioritization plan is done. Um, we can definitely seek that out uh, to just ensure that everything is the way that people want it. Um, make sure all the boards are happy and that all the residents are happy with the projects. Hmm. Um, any, any other questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? Charlie, you got any input? Any? Okay. I, I think what I'd like to see is if we can get some sort of um, something for our newspapers, something okay. that we can have a potential public hearing if COVID doesn't create a problem and we've got issues with space. Um, and I think that's probably a good starting point. Um, and have Steve here at that public hearing and try to get some ideas. And if, Steve, is that um, Widen Lane, is that, uh, you got that on PDF, whatever changes they wanted over there? Or yeah, whatever yeah, you're proposing? Okay. Yeah. I'd like to take a look at that and share it with the board. That's one of the areas that I see, but like I say, as the highway surveyor, um, those two intersections. But I, I, you're inclined to think that maybe some lighting in those intersections would probably, um, you're not going to redo any of those intersections. Not that I, I don't want to have to redo them all, but if, okay. if it has to be, then that's what I want to do. Okay. Especially we get it from the grant money. Okay, but we'd need a full study on that. Right. Yeah, I can get that free from um, full column. Okay. All right. So you'll work, you'll work on that. So is this four hundred thousand dollars a year or four hundred thousand dollars once? So it's per community. Um, it's technically per year, um, but they do prioritize communities that haven't used it yet, um, like picking the, the projects and going through what their budget is for the year. Do you know how much your overall budget is? Do you know how much money you have to give? On the for the T total to the state for each for like, engineer? No, I'm I'm asking her how how much Complete Streets has to give. So that or changes it's... year to year. Um, I know that they started in 2017. Um, between 2017 and 2021, um, they awarded 30 million to different communities in the state. Um, Do you know how much that is by the year? No, I don't have that broken down, but that's on the um, Complete Streets. The, the website where they have the map of the different communities. Mm -hmm. You can see how much was awarded for each project specifically and within each year. Do you know what your budget's gonna be next year? How much money you're gonna to have to award the towns and the state? So I'm not with the no. Complete Streets program. Oh. <laughs> She's with an environmental company that's assisting Steve with the Complete Streets program. So we're, we're the um, engineering and, and development company. Oh, so you, are you the engineer that we would use? Uh, <laughs> um, and can I have a list of those bylaws that you would have, or should I go to Complete Streets for that? Um, so they definitely have the different towns' policies. They don't have links to their bylaws, um, but I can I can find those and send them out an email. I really appreciate that. This Complete Streets money, is this money in the bank or money that this legislature needs to approve? We're, gonna, we're not going to be in a position where 
Uh, we, we prioritize all the projects and then we've got some technical assistance and then we get to a point where we get ready to start the project and the money's dried up. So there's no clear answer on that. Um, they've been continually, uh, continuously refunding the program. Um, and I'm not sure if anything's going to change after COVID. Um, as of right now, the program is still in full swing. Um, I think a good indication is, is once we get this technical assistance, there's really nothing to lose for the planning process. Um, we could hold off on, on doing designs until we know for sure that the, the money is there. Don't we need to have the application in with a design in order to apply for it? Yes, and that's the So that's a catch first. 22. So hopefully they'll they'll have some new announcement around January um, before these April 1st deadlines. Maybe we should wait until next year to see if it's still going forward before we start having hearings, and then that way we'll be able to have hearings. I don't, I, I don't agree, only because the, the process with town government takes so long to begin with. I think we ought to start on the list, get our see which projects we need to move forward, and then we're ahead of the game. If there's no funding this year, then at least we have that list so that we can have something to work with uh, for next year. I as know long that as Hanson just had a money on it. That went on a couple of years, and the, it, I guess the, the dollar value changed and contractors changed, and I think they're finally starting that program. But I think that was a year and a half or so before the time they got permitted before the time they did it. So I know that the only thing that has changed with the Complete Streets program is that initially they were offering up to $50,000 for the technical assistance portion, but towns weren't using the full amount, so they lowered it to $38,000. Um, but that was within the first year of implementation. Um, so since then, the, the numbers and limits have stayed the same. Um, and there's been no chatter about changing that. Any other questions from the board? Does anybody have a general consensus where we'd like to proceed with um, trying to get some public input? I think that's where we're at, yeah. Any? Yeah. Well, I definitely think that we need the public's input. All right. Um, so I think what we'd like to do, if you can reach out to, to, to Steve or send it to the, the planning board office, um, and then we can work on trying to get some sort of public input. Um, and again, I've asked the members before to, if there's a project that they see themselves, you know, let's compile them on the list, speak with Steve, uh, which, which I did, I know what his priorities are, um, and then maybe you can share the other 13 or the other 12 that uh, we'll need on the list because we do need the, the 15. Mm -hmm. okay. And then maybe in a few weeks, uh, you might have an answer on the technical assistance. Yes, hopefully. Um, we'll have okay. to start start making calls and figuring out where that is. <laughs> okay. Anything else to board? Okay. Listen. Courtney, thank you very, very much. And I'm sure we're going to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thirty-four. We have an appointment with Duxbury Construction. Are they here? That would be me. Good evening. I'm Freeman Boynton, um, representing Scott Casagrande, who is here this evening. Who owns the property? Okay. Um, just spell your name for me, only because sure. I want to make sure the tape gets it. No problem. Casa Grande, C A S A. First name? It's Scott. Oh, Scott. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Casa Grande. Casa Grande. Ah, okay. I got that. Okay. Okay. That's the point, and you are representing them on the. What's well, spelling my last name? Nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The site plan review for 311 and 313. One of the things that I that I do want to do before you get started, um, did all the members kind of take a look at the the reports that came through? Yes. Okay. Um, we 
we saw your drainage reports, okay? And I don't know that there's anybody that's qualified for the board to review those drainage reports to make sure that they're accurate. Um, so what I'm gonna ask my board is that you're gonna have to deposit some funds in one of our, in our escrow account so that we can get that reviewed. Okay. Um, it's been a little change in, in, in structure on the board, so we don't have anybody right now to review it, um, but we will make those arrangements. Um, okay. And then we'll have to come up with some sort of number that you'll have to deposit in that account. But feel free to make the, the presentation, um, and, but we do need to get all that analysis reviewed. What do you suppose the timing might be on that? The timing? I'm kind of hoping to get started fairly soon. Don't we really, don't, wouldn't we put this out to review to Amory or somebody of that well, nature? Well, that, that's my question, um, and I'm not sure. We that's yeah, so we were in the process of, uh, we actually contacted a few engineers. We're actually looking to get some ballparks and some ideas as far as reviews, so. Correct, and we don't know at this point if Amory or anybody got back to us. Unfortunately, it happened right about all the time, and we haven't had a regular meeting since. So you don't have anybody on contract right now? Then? No. Um, they, they've just made some changes, but I'll make it a point to reach out to Amory and okay. someone else uh, in the next day or so to try, try to get some ideas. But please make Either it way, I, But also, I would expect by our next meeting, being every, you know, the first of next month, I would expect some feedback if we can get that in. Correct. Okay. So you'll work on it, send it out, and let us know how much money before the next meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, in hopes of getting you back in next meeting. Okay. We yeah. can definitely do that. Tomorrow's before Friday. I mean, I'll try to make some calls. The office the office isn't open, so it's going to be Monday before I can reach out to the secretary and see um, who she has for lists. Um, yeah, we, we work quite a bit with uh, Pat Brennan from yeah. Amory Associates, if, if that's who you're thinking of. And we can certainly email them the plans if you guys want to. Get the pricing and put it together. We can. I don't know the name yeah. of that. Was it? Was that you say you were hammering to? Yeah. Yeah. We uh, use them a lot for our site plan reviews. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, so do we. We know Pat Brennan over there. Yeah. Right? Scott happens to be on the plan. I'm on the planning board. board. Ducks, right? Ducks right. I also <laughs> think even if our secretary was here, she could probably tell us who she would have lined up. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just don't Whatever. see that being an issue. Whatever you guys choose to do, we can. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Make accommodations. Yeah. Okay. You want to make a presentation? Yep, certainly. So uh, Scott owns this property um, right down the street on Plymouth Street. Um, he owns an insurance business here, which is in this building in the front called Borheck Insurance. He's kind of settled between the Walmart and the Stop and Shop. Those are his neighbors in the rear. Um, beside him to the left is a big um, metal building that does automobile repair and all that kind of stuff in this vacant lot to the right. So we really don't feel as though we're going to impact the neighborhood negatively. Um, but Scott's got a, a pastime, I, I believe, where he plays with BMWs. And he would like to put up a, a metal building in the, in the rear to accommodate the storage of some cars and that kind of stuff. It's, it's basically for his personal use and a few of his friends who might want to keep their cars in here also. Um, so we're taking the existing septic system and we're moving it back in a little bit to the rear. And uh, we just want to take a foundation hole and put in a foundation and put up this small metal building in comparison to his neighbors. Um, we submitted a claim to the Board of Health and they sent it out for an independent review. There were a couple of silly minor details that were going to make a few tweaks to the plan that won't affect uh, what we're doing on the site. Um, and we did the drainage. No point in talking about that. We're going to send it out for review. Um, but we're basically adding some additional parking spaces on the left, some additional parking spaces on the right. And we're also counting the parking spaces inside the building as, as uh, additional parking. Um, we gave you an analysis of the site coverage, and we do meet the uh, Halifax coverage. And also, um, we're increasing the, the uh, site coverage from um, 
something 4,000 square feet to 8,000 square feet. Um, we provided lighting on two sides of the building here to provide safe access in the evening. Uh, they will be on timers and they'll go off at uh, probably 7 o'clock every night and come on with a photo cell. Um, that's about it. The, the drainage consists of basically just a swale that um, runs around the building. It's a, it's a drainage swale right here that'll take the water off the roof and drop it into a swale here. Um, the water from this parking lot runs into a little swale here, and that's about it. We're not, we're not accommodating any of the rest of the site, but just the existing, or just the proposed use of the rear. And that's about it. Okay, so just, just storage and tinkering, yeah. mostly during the day? It's storage for uh, like antique and classic cars okay. and stuff, that's it. It won't be any operations. There's no, no operations. There's actually, I'm, no employees. I'm picking up parking spaces that won't even be used by this building <laughs> technically. So, uh, in doing it, it won't it won't create other other uses. It's, it's basically a private use type of structure. Is what I want to do with it. Um, as far as the um, like the drainage and everything, we really just have the the drainage off of there. All the parking for it will be gravel and everything. Similar to what I have now. We have okay. pretty much all gravel other than. A, paved runway that runs up the back that you take a park off of. Um, so like, from, like I say, from a drainage standpoint, it's off in the back. Our neighbor behind us is, is Walmart. It's actually Walmart's retention pond <laughs> behind us. And to the left of us is uh, Stop and Shop's parking lot in the outer road that comes around, basically. So, so that's no kind of where we are. on any of butter or anything. I guess they didn't want to show up even, but that, that's probably not. I would imagine nobody. And where the vacant lot to the right, which is, you know, someday somebody's going to develop something on it. And we're staying 40 feet from that. Yeah. Yeah, we're way off of that side there. So my parking along that right-hand side that goes up the back would just continue now all the way to the back of the lot. Okay. But again, that, all that parking's gravel back there. It's all excess parking. We don't, we don't you know, utilize. We won't, I, I don't picture us utilizing back there. Uh, the buildings parked down by the buildings. So. Um, Plus, the building itself would be parked. <laughs> yeah, so. Table one? Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? You know what? I thought you only had the one. Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't look at it. When, so that's just a leaching trash like that. Yeah, there's not much to the drainage, to be honest with you. Right. Um, why are you reviewing that? One of my concerns is the, the leaching trench that you put in there, and I do noted that you had six inch pipe going in. Is that just for the storage capacity, the storage of, for the effluent coming off the roof? The rainwater off the roof, yes. Right. Okay. Um, you got a four foot wide trench, no storage capacity. I did look at something in the calcs. That was, and I'm not 100% sure. Page 34, um, when they did the calcs for the 100 year storm, it looked like they had about seven inches of water that you anticipate having to absorb. Yeah, the 100 year storm is a seven inch rainfall. I was under the impression it was a 12 inch rainfall in the 100 year. I don't know my head. Okay. Just have, I, I know the Bob did Is that dispatch. a Halifax rig or? Is that no, no, it's not a Halifax rig. I, I always I thought that the 25 year storm was, was seven inches. I just noticed it, but like I said, I don't do storm water. No. So that's why I think we should have it reviewed. I did see the seven inches, and I thought that that was a little low for the no. 100 year storm. Um, I thought it was 12 inches, 24 hours. No, I think it's. No, it's, I think it's, it's seven. I think it's I'm, seven and a half inches a for a hundred years. Storm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Seven yeah. and a. Okay. Yeah. There yeah. are some yeah. towns that do step on that, require you to design for more, but unless you have a, a bylaw that requires additional. Yep. We don't. It we don't. I'm just, seven, just going seven and a half inches. Going from uh, from memory. Um, show me the doors on that building. Is it according to the plan? You've got a, a door coming in off. Um, There'd be a big door on the front. 
right? There's a door right here and a door right here. That's it. That's a door over here. Yeah, that's not what your drawing shows. Your drawing shows a door coming off, um, would be on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. on top of the septic system. Oh, in, in front of that, in, to the front. Right here. Well, no, I'm Seven, showing back. The drawing, in our package, um, the drawing on the building, and I, I looked at it on the computer. Doesn't that show two doors on the side of the building? It does. Yeah, the yeah. back door isn't going to happen because of the septic system. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it does show. It shows. Does it show a back door? Yeah. So yes, like you're yeah, going to have a gone. door on so this even. Yeah. Just that's, just that's probably so just a generic. So you're going to have a door on this even. You're going to have a door there. Scott, are you going to put a doorway for a human? Then, mm -hmm. okay. So Scott, you need that. You need. Where are you? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go. Oh, oh, one at a time. Okay. Um, <coughs> you're going to have a door on the even here. That's going to be a ten by ten or. Doesn't sound right. This, I'm just yeah. going by your drawing, so you need yeah. to update that. Yep, 10 by 10 there. Yep. 10 by 10 there, and where's the other 10 by 10 going? And the ones they have on the side, there'd be one, there'd be one right here. Yeah. And then because originally when we were looking at the septic, we were thinking about doing it over here. I would have had a second door. I decided not to do that because I just don't want to deal with it in this section, so I eliminated the second door. So there'll just be a door here okay. and a door here. And then I'm going to put it. You know, manual passage door next to this door. Okay. For, um, for the building entry would be there. It looks like you got water going into the building, but it also looks like you've got a septic tank that's coming off of that. Yeah, there'll be a tank off of it that it'll then go down into our pump tank that we have. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that. I had questions on the septic plant. So yeah. you're going to have a bathroom or you're going to have water in that building? Yeah, you're going to have like a half bath and then you wash your hands and go to the bathroom. Okay. Um, what are they going to do? For, they're going to make you do any floor drains? Uh, my understanding is no. So that's not commercial. It's not, not commercial use. Not, not for the bathroom. Not for the bathroom. Um, we ran into this recently. Um, I don't think you want drains with vehicle storage. Because then you get stuff goes out. Well, that's why they require, they require you to have floor drains with tight tanks. But um, I'm not sure where his proposal is in actually doing. There's no work being done. There's no way. There's, just that's not just look at that. Yeah, sure. yeah just okay. look at that regulation. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm I, happy to look at it. <laughs> yeah, just look at it to, just to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, Vehicle right. storage on the inside. Yes. How many? How many? Um, my guess is, what do we got there? About 15 or 16? Okay. Unless the collection gets out of control and I can put a lift in and put another one on top of each other, but I don't, I'm hoping that's not going to happen. <laughs> There's eight spaces shown, but you can certainly get 16 in there. Yeah. I don't know that that's, you know, I couldn't really tell. Is that eight spaces that's inside the building or look like it might have been the existing parking area? No, there's no parking back there. It looks like it's nothing back there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a, and it's got a typical 10 by 20. I could, and I as could far scale as, it, but that's, he's got a regular spot. I think spot. that's set up, correct me if I'm wrong, Freeman, that's kind of set up based on like making standard parking lots like public parking type of scenario. I can put the cars on casters and roll them, oh, yeah, can roll them around in there. I can, my guess, yeah. my plan is to try to have you know, 15, 16 cars. That's what I said. What you're providing here is probably way larger than what you need. Yeah, to pull the cars in and out. For a spot. For what I'm doing with them, yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you, you going to try and be a big part of the car show? <laughs> well, I go over there sometimes now, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of a hobby that I have, and I've run out of space in, in my garage at home, so own the property. I mean, honestly, I was thinking of building something down here on my other land that I own. No, no, no. Computer, so next to uh, the kitchen I'm, there. But I'm sorry, I didn't. We already own this property, so. I should have. Why not do it where I can walk up back in the office and go see the cars? Car. <laughs> so, so it's not really, you know, it's not adding to a business use at the property, really, storage. Now you wouldn't want it limited, though, if you ever did sell. Well, I would think if I, if I did, they'd have to come back through the boards to get approval for what they would want to do if they were yeah. changing the use. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. check with the Board of Appeals I'm just making sure you thought it's right. garages, because they do have a limit on a four-car garage. Uh, well, it's, it's not residential. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's it's commercial. Right. That's why I'm a little concerned about your, your floor drain. You might have to, I did run across this on a couple of occasions, especially where you are commercial. Um, I don't know that the commercial aspect says you need to repair, but you could very well be with storage because if you bring something in that's wet, 
Um, so you, 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 just, you might want to research that. Okay. And that would just go to a tight tank. Yeah, in a my, tank. my understanding is that typically floor drains are not permitted in this kind of an application, any kind of a garage, because if, if a fuel tank leaks and it runs out, that's why it goes into a tight. That's why it goes into yeah, a tight. Even if it goes yeah, into a tight, worse. I'm, I'm, and it, it could be worse. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of disagree with you. Okay. I think you need to look at that because I think you might find. And I'm just. Would that be? It might be under the plumbing code. Um, because we got a building right down the street that that was just going to be used for storage too, mm -hmm. um, until they put the water pipe in. Um, and. And I know that that building was required. Uh, we'll that's find out. Pier shop. We'll find out. They put in floor drains. Yeah, they had to put in floor drains. I thought everybody was against floor drains. Well, the, the <laughs> well, what do you do with the water when it goes in the building? Push it out the door. It evaporates. You know, we don't make the regulations. Yeah. We just uh, try to keep. I mean, it. if I had, a, you know, if I had a fluid spill or whatever, I mean, I have. If you had a fluid spill, the kitty dry. You're better off cleaner up. You're better off the fluid spill go into the tight tank than you would be have the fluid spill come out and go into the ground outside. So, just check that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll check it. I'm just thinking it'd be hard to spill that much. Okay. No, we'll check that. We'll check. Um, Where do you suppose we'd find those regulations? I think they're under the plumbing. Okay. Um, I, she has your email. Yep. I'll do some research and if okay. I can find it, I'll have it. She won't be until Monday. Okay. Um, I do know some plumbers too. Pardon? Would that I do be know like some plumbers also, I can ask. You have them? Wouldn't it be like Double EPA check. or DEP? No, not DEP. Yeah, but, but where it's not commercial, I, I don't see where it well, applies. Well, see, he's in a commercial location. But he's also in a residential, right? He's oh, not all of our yeah, it stuff be in that thing. Yeah, That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like in his zoning, he, he's both. It's a non-commercial use of a building in a commercial. Just check it. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Okay, I have no problem with that. But uh, um, I have a couple questions. You're not really proposing much for contours, right? As far as change, it, like I see those <coughs> contours, but nothing more than a foot off yeah. of existing grade. Well, it is basically the front portion of the building and the existing parking isn't changing much. We're recontouring it to direct the water over towards the drain. The back half of the lot, there's a little bit of depression in wood. Going to be bringing that up a little bit. Not a lot of change. Yeah, we're not changing a whole bunch. It's pretty fairly flat. Yeah, I'm just looking. I don't know if we need if a review of the drainage is necessary. I think I know. Did you look at that? Not doing a whole lot. <laughs> Sixty-page report. No, I tend not to find those interesting. <laughs> But I mean, just looking at what's proposed, I, I don't see an, in, an impact. We, we certainly can. I just we, did, we did basically choose to take all that clean water off the roof that doesn't require a sediment trap and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that won't require anything. Put the it right out into a okay. drainage thing. And, and all the ash are all that. Uh, the ash is all going to be removed. Uh, proof will be in the pudding of whether or not the gravel would. This, this trench here, which is only a two foot wide trench, um, on the, is it the northern side of your arrow. Now it would be an. Uh, I still have a little bit of a arrow's paved paved runway, runway that runs up the back. Okay. Some, of the, some of it will still be there, but, yeah. but it's all there now. It's, it's because everything runs from the back of the lot down to the front, but that's yeah. something. And what we're capturing here is we're trying to, we're trying to change some of that, actually. Okay. <laughs> so. So Mark, I'll let Mark finish and then. Sure. Anything else, Mark? No, I think, I think I'm satisfied at this point. Okay. Rick, anything? Um, I'm going to ask you about aesthetics in a minute, but uh, I don't know if, Amy, you got any questions on the plan? Um, all right, I assume that you're going to go to Zoning Board of Appeals for variances. Our property is one big variance as it is. <laughs> Very narrow lot. Well, they're looking at it. Aesthetics. Mm -hmm. The A-frame is going to be pointing towards Plymouth Street. Yep. What are you doing as far as um, exterior sheathing and that type? 
Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a metal building, but it'll be the same colors as our other two buildings. So it'll have a white, a white trim and a tan color matching the other two buildings. Your other ones aren't metal. No. no. But the color, it'll be the same coloration. Same color scheme. Yeah. Recall some of the rates, it's probably 20 years ago when they started the site plan on those buildings that were on 106. Uh, as far as being metal buildings, you couldn't have a metal front facade, or the front of the building couldn't be metal. I mean, I'm, I'm checking just like right off the bat, we recently did Paul's base, and that's up 106, same thing. Okay. I mean. Orioles. So not that I can remember. You, yeah, well, I know Orioles, I don't know, but I, there I was, can't even remember what that's supposed to look like. But I, even things like riches and things like that, I can think of a few examples. I can remember within the last twenty. Remember on the bylaw study committee, there was a lot of fussing about metal buildings in that area. Um, this will Charlie, not be up on the street, obviously, too. Yeah, I, I realize that. Yeah. Charlie, can you just help us out for a second? Do you recall anything about the a metal type buildings being in that section of Route 58? as far as site plan? I don't think there's any rules or you know, bylaws about type of construction. Okay. We're not in the historic district. Yeah, okay. I know that, I know that. I, I was on a bylaws to committee years ago and I know there was some fussing about the metal buildings. Okay. It was more so because of um, um, the garage that used to be when Nesrell is, is the farm stand now. There yeah. was that garage and Gyms. then there was, there was something else proposed. Um, there was something else proposed, but okay. I said your memory. So the front is going to be, you're going to provide us with some sort of detail as to what this thing is going to look like, especially since your doors aren't in the right place. And that kind of bugged me um, because one of those doors would have been right over your septic system. Yeah, that's been eliminated. Yeah, which is not an H20 loading septic system. Yeah. Um, so, so please get us updated on that. Yep. We can update that plan and provide it. Yes. Anything else? Any other comments you, anybody wants to make? So if they need to make some changes, they can do it um, while they're waiting for a review. So we definitely want to go forward with the review, or is that, is here, like, some people I, I do because, I mean, the, yeah, report was six, the report was 60 some odd pages long. And I know part of it was the, the soils and soil types and Merrimack soils, but I'm not qualified to determine how much water is coming off of that roof um, into a trench. I mean, if you had chambers or something in there that had some capacity to hold and then leach out, or if you had some place for this water to go, if the trench did fill up in the middle of the winter, I'd be a little more susceptible to say, okay, we just got some roof drains. You also got a two-foot trench to cover about 2,000 feet of uh, gravel parking area. I'm guessing. Yeah, but so isn't gravel parking area isn't that like the key? No, but if you get a massive rain, what happens is everything sloped down here. This water's going to run. It's not going to absorb. The two-foot trench, to me, doesn't seem like it's enough. That's it, fine. You could be, you know, I could be wrong. We can have wrong. The, the only thing about the comment about the, the long drainage report, I've never seen one that looked like I wanted to read it. I've never seen one that's <laughs> yeah. 10, 15 pages. Well, yeah, you know he, what I mean? He, there are, that's just what it takes to produce a lot of boiler pour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the trench in behind the building is actually four feet wide and Correct. two feet of stone. So there is a fairly sizable void volume that will retain a fairly considerable amount of water. Yeah, the two foot side one pitches back towards that back one. So if it goes beyond that, it will go into that. So. I mean, your grade rises a foot to the end of that trench. So, I mean, your, your best case scenario is all the affluent is going to come in from parking lot number six and then travel down to, to I guess it's going to be an open area because you're going to cut that asphalt off. The, the front trench is actually two feet wide and two feet deep also. Correct. So that'll hold up there in a while also. But you're going to be picking up 
because you're going to be gravel all the way back from um, the edge of the building over the septic system. Let me see. Yeah, you gravel over the septic. What are you putting over no. the septic? No. Oh, that, that's grass, right? Yes. And you have to make sure the septic system. You don't show a grass line here, but okay, so let's say you go grass over there, you're gonna have to put a curb bumper or something in. You got an 80, 81. She, she drops down three feet from the center of your garage down to the edge of your parking lot. Yep. So that, you know, one time that's a fair amount. Um, you could be 100% correct, this will do it. I, I think I'd rather have someone that's familiar with drainage and drainage. Calcs. I mean, if you had a bunch of chambers in there, I'd probably look at it and say, they'll hold it. Well, we're really only required to pick up the additional improvements to the property. So, in essence, the, the roof area for the building is going into this four by two foot um, drainage trench in the back because it has a 40% void volume. So, we'll, it will retain a fair amount of water. And then we're required to pick up the additional parking spaces. These three here. And these four here. You know, you you required to pick up the whole lot. You got you get additional spaces, but you got the you got to pick up the whole lot. But the rest of the lot's already developed. So where you got so where's so that water going to go? Just so because you developed the four doesn't mean it's not going to go back into this trench. Everything is graded down towards the trench. If you look at a proposed eighty, the center of the building, correct? It drops down to a to a seventy seven contour. Um, into the basin. I don't let me see. That's pretty close to the way the lot drops now, isn't it? Correct. It that's that's a natural flow. Yeah. And then your top of your basin shows a 77.5. Yep. Um, so you're, you're picking up 18 inches or two feet of, um, of drop in a gravel drive. Correct. And I'm going to guess that you got. 3,000 square feet. I know you got assistant, but you, you, you're picking up all of this. Are you following me? You're going to pick up from the center of that building all the way down? Correct. Okay. I agree. Okay. I don't think it would be a big deal for Pat to put up, evaluate it. Okay. Pat Brennan, if that's who you choose. Does Brennan work for Army? Yeah. Yes, he's the principal. Any other concerns, guys? The only Lightning. other thought, and I'm sure you've thought of it, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for the bylaw now about um, green area. Do we have enough of that by that bylaw? I'm looking for it right now to help us out, but I just want to make sure we've thought of it to say it yeah. now before we go forward and, and then I bring it up, so I'm just making sure that we've thought of it. Yeah, I think we're... Well, we're under the lot, pretty well under the lot coverage. What do you mean by green area? You know, like how um, certain areas have to like, like for instance, and um, O'Reilly's, they had to have a certain amount of area that was buffered. And I think that they do have it. I'm just mentioning it now so that we're all aware and they're aware. Well, we have so grass that, in the back. Yeah, I think, I think that's you know what I'm saying. under that lot coverage for Senate. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. there is a lot coverage Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't than... going to send you back again, so I'm yeah. trying to okay. think of everything. Okay. Yeah, make sure okay. that, yeah, your lot percentage coverage shouldn't be any more than 25%, or something like that, but I think you're under that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have you know, all the green space. We're not affecting anything in the old part of the development. It's all uh, the lawns and the green space that we have. It all stays. It, it all stays, yeah. It, the, the plan should be sort of modified so we know where that break is um, over the septic system, because that would be considered your green area, too. Um, this doesn't... Are you using this site plan and the septic? I mean, I did see this a few weeks ago. Is this the only plan you developed? Correct. Yeah. I'd suggest you clarify your, your loam and seed areas. Okay. You have a break there to make sure. And then you're going to, let me just write down, the loam and seed areas, and then your, um, reconfiguration of your doors. Mm -hmm. 
That's basically, again, that'll be the elimination of that. Correct. Yeah, when I saw that initially and I looked at the plan, I did It'd be hard to get in there. <laughs> well, I, I know that you've got the uh, ADS chambers that are not H20 loading, or these yeah. aren't designed for H20 yeah. loading. Plus, if it's up a little bit higher, too, you, it wouldn't work. So. But there should be some sort of a break between the uh, post parking area. And it's got a line there, but I'm not sure what that line is. Yeah, oh, I think that, that looks like the old septic. It shows 11 foot 2 from the old, is that the old septic? No, yes. the reserve area. Reserve. 11 2 to the reserve yeah, area. Yeah, the one near Pest Pit 2. Mm -hmm. Well, well we didn't. no, you, what you got here is you've got existing SAS to be removed. Oh, that's the other little one. Yeah, yeah. that is a couple. That's where the building is. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so that's your reserve area. Yeah, so if you can get a break in there somewhere so that we know that um, your parking lot only picks up the middle of that building and then it's going to be grass, the remaining area, over the septic. Yeah, it looks like you just have to pull that dash line to the southeast. Yeah, all they got to do is put a line right there at the edge of the septic. I think the heavy, like I said, I believe it's there. The heavy dash line that it's right through the it. middle of the septic. I think it's just pull it down. It's kind of the limits of the gravel parking. You can see that heavy dash line. Well, yeah, it runs you, around the perimeter of the parking it, here. It's also the border around okay. the note. Well, I'm going to tell you now that if that line runs across the center of that septic system, you're not going to put ADS chambers in. We put uh, three-quarter double wash stone in between the chambers and a Meraki 600X in order to get close enough to H20 loading. He should be able to drive his cars on it, but I wouldn't back an oil truck over no. it. I, I can tell you now, I can tell you now that what you got in here for septic is not H20 loading. So if I went out to review, okay. um, then you need to grab it because ADS chambers there's no ADS chambers that are each 20 loading. Yep. None. I understand. So, if that's, and that's what I think you had in there. Uh, yeah, you see. Yeah, you got a plan for parking. Back. You got ARC 36 chambers that show H20. They don't make them. Yep. So, so we're trying to make them heavy duty so I can put his little cars on it and well, not back up H20 load. Here's, here's the problem. If you, and we're just getting away from the site plan here. The only way to make them heavy duty is to put the stone under and around, but you're not going to get your 4.66 uh, linear feet. So you're not you're going to need a bigger system. So you really, if if that's what you submitted to, to the board of health, um, I'd get that changed. And there's only one plastic chamber that I know of, and, and that's the infiltrator H20. You know, with 11 and a half inch invert, that's going to get you H20. And with stone. Stone underneath it also? Stone underneath, stone around. How much cover um, you have to have on it when you were looking? You gotta have twelve inches. You gotta have well, you're gonna have to have uh, filter fabric and then you're gonna have to need the um, the geogrid. So you if you're gonna move that line, you gotta move the line down. Okay. Because it's not worth changing the whole septic system if that line is the edge of the pocket line. Well that's that's where we intend the line to be, is down here at the first parking okay. space. Yeah, the last parking space is the end of the park. But if he okay. wants let's, to park let's... his car on it, I don't think he'll hurt it. Well, the problem is we're not going to approve it if you're going to park your car. Okay. Yeah, it's not made for... No, the, the ADS chamber is fine. not made. Yeah, that's not good. We've got bobcats that go through them, so... Yeah. Um, so you want to make, just move that line down. Okay. Okay. Um, in front of the D-box, put a curb stop. We can do that. We'll do is probably just end the gravel there and then it'll be grass. So. Yeah, as long as you got a defender to the point, then yeah. that's fine. You can leave uh, that type of change. Yep, okay. Did you say you put stone around there? Yeah, on the cross section in between the chambers. <laughs> and this went through a review at the Board of Health and got approved? I, they picked up on a couple of silly little things, but I don't believe that was one of them. Okay, I'm going to make a suggestion. You change it. Just take the stone out? You're going to have to because you can't get your, your let me look at your calculations. You're using. Uh, we did use all bottom area, the four point. No, let me just see. If you use bottom area, it's 30 by 16. 4.8 gallons per. Yeah, see. Per foot. 
Yeah, using 4.8. You can't get that with stone. Not with stone underneath it, I agree. No, you can't get that. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry we're getting away. This is more Board of Health. That's my other hand. We'll so. take it all out. Yeah. And move the line. Yeah, just move the line. Take the stone out. You can get your 4.8 with sand. Um, and just have a definitive point there so that mm -hmm. nobody can drive on. Yep. Um, if that did go out to be reviewed, just, just Bob, did Bob do the design? Just have him change uh, it. Yep. Just have him change it and then resubmit it um, so that you don't get to the, it was in a couple of weeks and it gets rejected. So. Okay. All right. Is there anything else uh, on the plenum wood side? I have no. Okay, so we kind of got an idea. They're going to make some adjustments to the plan um, as far as moving the line down, uh, show a loam and seed. Um, we'll see about getting just someone to just double check the couch. Um, it's a lot better talking with you guys than what I thought because I thought you were using that whole trench for drainage. Because yeah. I did no, see. No, not that. Yeah, okay. And, you know, that wasn't going to fly. Yeah. Uh, I've been in your seat. <laughs> We're trying to keep it as simple as possible, to be honest with you, back there. Because, I mean, the use I want to use it for is... Yeah, a couple of small things. Those, so there's nothing wrong with yeah. the proposal. This is, yeah, this is going to be really dead storage, so yeah. even though you've got a tank in here, you're not going to have... Your alarm right now is in building number one? Yes. Okay. So, right outside my office. <laughs> okay, so that's really not going to change because your gravity from there down. Yeah. Uh, and you're using an H20 mono for like that? I don't have any questions if you got an idea of what we need. And I think by the time you get this submitted, uh, we'll work on Monday getting, um, if, we, if Amory is the, the guy, then uh, I'll let Joanne reach out to them. If we have contact with Joanne, she could probably okay. tell we'll us. We'll have right Joanne now. set it up. And I think everybody's okay with your proposal. Um, check on the floor drains. That's mm -hmm. not. This boy's jurisdiction, sure. um, so that you don't get thing built and start, start cutting floors. Yeah. Um, I don't think that we need to take a vote at this point. Um, I think you got a good general consensus that everybody's on board. Just do your modifications, um, and we'll have Joanne reach out to. There was a girl's name on the application. Just reach out to whoever that girl was. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we? Anything else? Gentlemen, thank you. Good luck. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like to see you guys are actually having meetings. I'm still doing Zoom meetings. I actually liked those. Did you? I, at first, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do this. And I'm like, wait, I can sit at home and do this. This is sweet. Oh, <laughs> well, we didn't have any plans sent home to us, so I'm look, trying to look at it. I'm running the meeting on one computer and trying to look at plans on another. Uh, yeah, that, that gets a little old, doesn't it? It gets tough. <laughs> I guess. Thank you very much. The big Thank controversial you. hearings. Oh yeah, especially if you have a forty B on a Zoom. Uh, yeah, we no, actually we pushing one off for that same reason. Yeah, pushing it, pushing it. You can right now, which is good. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah forty B is actually scheduled I mean, now. Oh, yeah. we have to deal with that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, we are done with our appointments. Um, well, we'll start with some discussion items. Uh, Pasture Lane. Um, we didn't hear any status on that. I did ask you to leave it on the agenda until that issue was resolved. Um, the next item that we have is uh, we received the communication from the selectman's office that if the school project starts to go move forward, excuse me, post cabin project starts to go forward, we're going to be short on meeting. Space. Um, and if that's the case, then we're going to have to look at changing our meeting dates because this room is not going to be available on Thursdays. Um, I do want to talk to talk with the whole board. Alan, see, yes. It's not the reason for the move is simply for convenience of setting and tearing down the room. Wednesdays are the all virtual school day. Okay. So that if the roof is used on Tuesday, it's not as big a rush to 
reset this room. If the meetings are on Thursday, then, for instance, I have to, once we're done here tonight, I have to call Scott, and then he's going to come back here tonight to set up the room for tomorrow morning. Yeah, so don't okay. do it if on a Thursday. It pushes the crunch on Friday for right. him. Okay. So, yeah, so it's not to do with post town and group projects so much as to do with the school schedule and, tearing, and resetting the room for the next day. It's easier for them to do it if it's on a Tuesday night than if it's on a Thursday night. Um, I'm not just going to put it. Amy, do you have a problem with Tuesday nights, this one? I do have obligations on Tuesday nights. The first and third. Mm -hmm. I have obligations on every Tuesday night. Okay. Um, Rick? Does it matter to me? Okay. Potentially. I mean, Alan, I think yeah. if, if it's not possible, it's not possible. So I was simply asking if it was possible, then you know, okay. how if it was done. If it can't be done, it can't be done. Let's, um, I'll, we'll, I'll bring it up with the next to when I get a full board and we'll uh, make a decision on that. Um, okay. Request to change meeting minutes. I believe that request. Amy, you had requested, and a letter was generated, which I'm sure everybody got from the secretary, regarding the meeting minutes and changes. And she found that the requests that you had made, Amy, weren't what the actual tape had said. And I believe when we discussed those meeting minutes, um, I asked you to write them down to send them to her to check. Um, she never got them. I have actually been in contact with her. I couldn't change it on the document she sent because it was not Word. No. So you can hear me up. So I have gone over the meeting, and I do have a lot of changes. And I emailed Joanne earlier tonight and said that I would be very willing to come in and sit with her and help her with the changes because there are a lot. Okay. Um, she works virtually, so getting together with her is, is going to be impossible. What changes do you have? Well, we, we would be talking for quite a while on the changes. Is that where the meetings, the minutes just went wrong by her? Were they done wrong? There was a lot of things that were um, done with misleading okay. and, and not which, telling which, the whole story. What do you mean misleading and not telling the whole story? Let's, let's well, start with which, instance, which, day, which day are we on? September 3rd. On our open meeting law violation, there was a lot of things left out. And um, that subject. And a, a lot. So, you know, um, it's, if you're going to write something about it, it has to be the full and correct story, not part of it. Uh, and so there was definitely some things that I thought should be changed, crossed out, and I didn't have the ability to take the whole and add and um, do that because this, this isn't in a form that's editable. If it was, then I could make all corrections in red so that we could see it, but I don't have time to type this all up. I took a few hours and went over the meeting in this, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not the paid secretary to be able to do it all. If I had a Word document, then I'd be, by all means, put in the changes. Okay. But a secretary these, these can't regular, tell us These are regular, that regular meeting, meeting minutes. Right. Okay. I'm not. And we're not going to be doing verbatim meeting minutes. So well, you, wait a minute. You need Who, to get. Why you do you keep talking the, about that? We're, that's only for hearings. Correct. And that's not my idea that I want to keep being labeled with because you have been doing this since you got on the board with verbatim minutes. Okay. And pointing your finger at me. Okay. And I would appreciate it if you would stop because it has nothing to do with verbatim minutes. But well, I take what, are you these, ask, what are you asking me to do then? 
changes. I mean, this, I mean, Rick, you can see that I have a lot of blue. Do you want me to go over all of it? We're not going to go over it. According to Joanne, the minutes were the minutes. The minutes but the minutes. Joanne is the secretary, and we're the planning board, and they are not her minutes to decide on what's okay. in there. You know, maybe the best thing for us to do is That's the if truth. you want to type your set of minutes, okay, you can type mine. And well, if she we're gave me this in a word you document, up, you, you type up your minutes, and we'll submit your minutes along with the rest of the board's minutes. And if someone needs to look at them, they can look at yours, and they can look at ours. No, 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 because no. We have a tape, and I've listened to some of the tapes, and I even found something very interesting on the October first minutes, which I thought was incorrect, um, but it isn't when I looked at the tape. So I think she's made an effort to try to get everything there correct. I'm not if it doesn't that, sound right, but it's we our can't help minutes. It. No, there are some okay. things that there is missing information, okay. and I have the right as a board member to make sure that what I said, especially, was stated correctly. Okay, so you have an option, uh, I think, and we'll discuss this. Is that mm -hmm. if you're not comfortable, don't sign the minutes. No, the option is that we, the secretary, doesn't make a change not possible because she's not on the board. She's the secretary that works to do our minutes, but we are ultimately the decision maker because these are our minutes. That is legally how it is. I, I totally agree with that, but I also think that if you had changes like from what she does, I think that those changes you add, like you address with us, and then we as a board okay. tell her. If you know what I mean, then, because then why don't because we go that way, because not neither no one of us has a chance to tell her to change the minutes. But if we all agree on a change, then okay. then that's different. You know what I mean? Okay. So like, if we can all agree that the things I, need to be changed. Let me just make this suggestion. These are your September third minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Why don't you edit the minutes, provide them to us, not the day before, give all the members supply them to Joanne, she can provide them to us at least three or four days before the next meeting, we'll review them and we'll put the September 3rd minutes on the agenda. Your version, her version. That fair? If she gave me a Word document that I could show you the red changes oh, that, with the I, additions? That, I don't put the, I don't know anything about that. That's how we minutes. remember when we did that with last year because it made it easier for us, Mark. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever did it, but but you know how how it was a, a suggestion that worked really well for like Carlos. I think made that um, suggestion and it worked really well. But it, you can, if you can't like show a red here, I I, I'm, I, can, I can't type this whole entire thing and work a full time job. Like it, I take. I, I take this very seriously, and I took all the time to try and find the edits and make sure of what was going on, but then to start typing it all, I never would have enough time. Okay. So well, if it was in call. a Word document, I don't then know. I'd be able to send you, through Joanne, all of the edits in red so that you could see what I was saying, and then that was that. Okay. I, I, don't, I personally don't know if that's possible. I'm not a computer guy, so... Um, it is. We did it last year. Okay. okay. Um, so she's familiar with that because she's done it. Then do you want to reach out to her? I will. And, and I actually we're gonna put did. We're going to put September 3rd meeting minutes on our next agenda. We'll hold that. Okay. And if you can't edit them the way that you want, then I, my suggestion is going to be you can submit your own minutes and sign them and the rest of the sign well, that's not. Legal. Well, that's. It, I mean, this board has spent hours and hours and hours over the last six months going over meeting minutes. Um, okay, October first. Does anybody have any changes or any any comments on the October first minutes?
Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for October 1st, 2020. Um, I'm looking for a second for the discussion. Oh, second. We're going to second that. Okay, I just want to make one little comment. Um, the, the minutes should hopefully be read prior to our meeting so that we can conduct business. Um, under the 650, uh, Joe Webby, it says Joe Webby is present. <coughs> Property for the boosters dwelling on the lot. And I looked at that and I says, hmm. It's an autocorrect probably from Boatman? It's not an autocorrect because I reviewed the tape, just like Joanne has been reviewing these tapes on all the questions that are popping up. Joe Webby actually did say boosters. I believe he meant to say Boatman. And I am going to make a note just to Joanne, we'll approve these minutes, and then just have her put a little note in there that... That is what he said. He, that is what he said. He said boosters, and it may be that it should have been Boatman. Uh, not that it's gonna make much difference, but just so that they're correct. We have a motion and a second. I'm gonna go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Put your pleasure in. I was just making sure that I had a couple of things looked at properly. I wanted to add um, under the pasture lien status, star C the attorney letter. Uh, we're not making any changes. I got a motion and a second. We're not making any changes. So if you don't want to vote for it, then that's up to you. These uh, have been out. No, these have been out quite some time. No, they they have not. It's okay. I have a motion and I have a second and I have a yes, a yes, a yes. Do you want to vote yes or do you want to vote no? I'm, I, I was reading, I wasn't ready, and I was stating a change, and you, that's an addition. Which, which it's an addition. We've had plenty of time to review minutes. We spent 40 minutes, the last meeting, reviewing mm -hmm. minutes. I'm a board member, and I am Correct. expressing my thoughts. I'm okay. like, we you're have the a chair, motion. and you run we, the meeting, but we, you're we, not like okay. able to treat me like this. We have a motion, and we have a second. So we have three. How do you want to vote? I'm not going to be bullied. Okay, so how do you want, you want to abstain? Do you understand that in addition to this is being asked for and you're um, denying me my right? You went forward for today. No, like, uh, I think the, like, a lot of times if, so, like, somebody makes a motion and then, like, everyone has a chance and like you're trying to sway i guess sway me to pull my motion to do the change. no i'm not trying to sway no. that or anything i'm trying to say out loud that i'm asking for a th few things that are uh, i'm uh, i just i think that you guys have two different perspectives on right. this and like I don't, I don't think either one of you are necessarily wrong but i think that your well so far tonight i have i can write my own minutes and be told that they can be put there. That's against my right as a board member to be able to talk about changes that I don't agree with. And now I'm being bullied to vote or and not be allowed to make a change or an addition. And I believe that it's the public's right to know certain things. All right, and so I want them in the minutes. But I don't think he's denying you a chance to do to not change them. This is the second time on tonight, two minutes, the first one was that I would be able to write my own minutes. I thought that was a decent proposal. I don't see how that's bullying. No, but I thought that that was actually giving you a chance. And now I'm being told chance. that I must vote and I can't have a change. But again, his proposal of you writing your minutes wasn't bullying. That was giving you a chance to voice your own opinion. That's cool. Like, that's a nice thing to do. Like, I think that your perspective changed that, where you thought it was negative, but it really wasn't. That was like a helpful thing, um, 100%. I disagree because he was because trying to state 
It's also stating that Joanne can tell us whether or not we can have something in our minutes. She's the secretary. She's not a uh, member again, of the board. Again, she's saying that you can't change them, but if we all voted on the change, she would. Right. She's saying that you and me cannot. We can. That's what she's saying. She no, not out one of us has the power the to do that. And would not change that. Would not change not it for, because one of us asked. That's not what she's supposed to do. What she's supposed to do is if we all ask for a change, and but I she never doesn't, that's a total specific. different thing. Well, not fully. But like, like I said, like any change, you should be proposing to us. And if we agree on the change, then the change takes place. And it has every time. I don't think we've ever voted for a change that didn't happen. No, I know. So you I'm know just I mean? asking for one little note that to see an attorney letter to be put into this under pasture lane status. But my motion is to do it without, okay, that, so without that. So like, so basically, like, if you want the thing and you think that me making the motion, you just say no. And that's but I didn't have a chance to state that I this before the motion was made. That's that's what I'm saying. It's a small thing. I'd really like to add. See the attorney letter. Okay. Okay. But that still doesn't get us past, like, we still have to address my motion. So even though you want that thing, you still have to vote yes or no. Okay. Because I already made the motion. Like, I'm not, I'm, you know what I mean? I so understand no what you're what, saying, but out of, out I of respect for saying. it, would you even consider it just so that we can end this? Would What's you that? consider just adding that small line to, start, to adjust your motion to say, <coughs> star C attorney letter? I, the attorney's letter should be in the, the discussion or in the mail. It's got nothing to do with the No, no, I see was that, was that meant that the attorney's letter wasn't written to the record. So, again, we have, but it's uh, not on we have a motion here, in a second. The attorney's we're not, we're not going anywhere. Um, we, 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 we disagree. I, I can tell you that I've, I've looked at a lot of plan board meeting minutes and watched some of the hearings, and there seems to always be a problem with adding this, adding that. If you had said that three days ago, and we were all put well, on notice I got and the had the ability to do that, then I think I'd be a little more susceptible. These meeting minutes have been out for some time. No, they and just this came is a out. constant. Okay, we have a motion in a second. Either vote or don't vote. It's up to you. I'm calling for the for the second time. Mark. Yes. I made the motion. Oh, you made the motion. Okay, so I'm calling for the vote. You get three, what's your pleasure? I'm gonna say no. Okay, fine. So we have, we have a motion, it passes three to one. Mm -hmm. okay. Next item on our agenda is our correspondence. Did everybody get a chance to review their mail? Um, yeah, the, there was the just a couple Pembroke of public thing. hearing notices. There was one very lengthy decision letter from Pembroke. Um, they have really no impact <coughs> on us. Um, does anybody have a question on those? Okay. Um, another business, the ZBA Comprehensive Country Estates Project has been postponed. I do not know of another day as of yet unless... Has that been determined, Charlie? No, I don't. They're going to continue to the 18th with the intention of getting the hearing that night. It will be done by or so. Okay. That hearing is going to be on 1018. Sorry, 1118. Excuse me, 1118. Okay, is there any other business that we need to attend to? If not, I'll be looking for a motion to adjourn at 834. We did not sign, I only have a draft. Okay, we we don't have any bills. Um, the meeting minutes that we approved. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Just because it's... You know what happens is we do that a little differently in, in the other boards. Is it in that one? Help me out with this. Stop it. Regarding an application for the town of 
East Bridgewater. I'll just go over it quickly because I did not get it from. I think we have to sign. You have to sign two copies of that just to remind you. One for the town clerk and one for the planning board office. Yeah, it's weird. I only Did saw one in there. There's only one. We've only seen one for the other. Like board. I said, mine's I've never heard of that. No, we've always done two, but mine says draft, so I can't. We've always done two. Yep. No, she she uh, voted no. Oh, yes, yes. No, she's gonna have to copy these because I only see one in here. That's the, let me it looks just, like there were two for the third. Is what I saw. Okay, but the third we just agreed we would hold. Okay. So we're not going to sign those. Okay. One other thing I'm going to bring to the board's attention that I just noticed in the mail folder: uh, Town of East Bridgewater has a finding and decision on an application of uh, Lucinda Sewers on a special permit for 215 Whitman Street and East Bridgewater, which is the former Jehovah Witness Church. It has no impact or bearing. If anybody wants to read it, you can. Anything you want to look at? No, thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? A second. second. Okay. All in favor? Fine, I don't care. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Four. Aye. Adjourning at uh, 836.